What's up and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be going over my personal opinion on the best AR-15 hunting setup. Alright, so let's get right into this video. Like I said before the intro rolled, I'm going to be going over my ideal AR-15 hunting setup and I'm going to be going over the things on my rifle that I like and that I would keep on this hunting setup and then I'm going to go over at the end some things that I would wish I could upgrade or things that I wish could help or things that I wish I could get to help improve this build and to um, help me out a little better in the field. Alright, so uh, let's get right into it. So the first thing that I think everyone should have on their AR-15 Actually, let me take, let me back up. Before we even get into any of the parts and pieces, let's go over calibers. So you can get an AR-15 in a bunch of different calibers, and I'm excluding the AR-10, the 308, the 65 Creedmoor. I'm excluding those. So you really need to pick out a good caliber. And the caliber you pick is really dependent upon what you're hunting. So, for example, if you're just hunting coyotes, you don't need that big of a bullet. All right, you don't need that much whomp when you shoot, uh, and it's just not as important as if you were hunting something a little bit bigger, like maybe some uh, hog or white-tailed deer, where you need a slightly bigger round with some more, some more push behind it, and um, to help help you bring down your target, right? Okay. So what I've chosen for mine is the 6.5 Grendel, and I here in Southwest Virginia do a lot of whitetail. We do um, we take pig hunting trips every year, um, and we do coyote hunting, so we do a little bit of everything, and I think the 6.5 Grendel is like the ideal hunting caliber for Southwest Virginia, okay? Uh, it's legal to hunt whitetail here with, and uh, it's pretty pretty common in gun stores around here. You can find, find the ammunition pretty regularly, um, which is one thing that the 6.8 SPC lacks, okay? So I have a hard time finding 6.8 bullets around here. Um, I know one gun, gun store off the top of my head that has them. Uh, but that's another good caliber is the 6.8 SPC. Uh, something that if you were considering a hunting caliber I would recommend that with, in comparison to the 6.5 Grendel. Like if you had to choose between two hunting calibers it would be those. Um, 5.56, 223, those are a little bit too small for whitetail but are ideal for really varmint hunting predator hunting, in my opinion. I think they do really well, uh, but not for the larger game. And you can't take pigs and deer with the 5.56. You can't take deer legally with the 5.56 here in Virginia. And I know you can in other states, but not here. And you do, you can hunt and kill pigs very easily with the 5.56, but it's just not as powerful as the 6.5 griddle. And when you're, when you're on the same platform, I think that you might as well just go up, right? Because your hunting rounds are going to be expensive regardless. Um, I pay $20 a box for my Grendel bullets and my 5.56 bullets that I hunt with, I pay $20 a box too. So, I mean, if your argument's price, I, I would just throw that out the window, honestly. Alright, so let's move on to what's on the rifle that I think should are really important things for a good hunting rifle. Um, these are not necessarily must-haves, but they are things that I think help. All right, so a quality trigger. You want to get something that you're comfortable with, that you like to shoot. I know people that use two-pound triggers, and I know people that use five-pound triggers. Um, I prefer like a three-and-a-half, and that's just me. Um, I like a good crisp trigger pull. This is a drop-in trigger. So the trigger that's in this AR-15 is the CMC trigger. It's a single-stage three-and-a-half pound pull trigger. It's a drop-in kit. I really like it a lot. Um, and I just think a trigger is important. You want something clean, you want something crisp. All right. Second, pretty good stock. You want something that's not going to wobble around on you a lot, but I mean, it's not necessary. Um, next thing, I think you should have a very good optic. Uh, I prefer second focal plane for hunting. Um, or my target shooting, I prefer first focal plane, but since we're going over a hunting rifle, I would recommend the second focal plane. Okay? So your reticle doesn't get in your way. And you're not really taking long, long shots or at least I'm not taking super long shots with my hunting rifle. Um, so the 
BDC and this will work perfectly fine. All right. Um, barrel. So I have an 18 inch barrel on this 6.5 uh, and I don't think you really need an 18 inch barrel. I think I would prefer a 16 inch just because I'm carrying this rifle all over the place and it's, it's not a light rifle. I mean it's not super heavy but the I think the shorter the barrel um, the better for hunting purposes. Okay, um, I don't think those two inches on the barrel are going to make that big of a difference when it comes to hunting. Uh, I don't think I'm taking those kind of shots, so I don't think that it's really necessary to have that extra two inches, get that extra velocity, and maybe do a little bit more. But I don't. I don't think it's very necessary. All right. Um, one thing. I, no, or I guess the next thing. I have a mount. So there's a Picatinny rail piece here at the bottom, and I have a mount that attaches to this Picatinny rail piece and it goes on my tripod so I can use a tripod when I'm predator hunting. Um, I have just an Amazon tripod and this is a Vortex mount. I think it's used for the, um, or intended to be used for the spotting scope. It works pretty good for a camera tripod. So this attaches to really any tripod because you can screw in the part that attaches to the head of your tripod and then it attaches right here to your rifle with a big 10 year old piece. And it's worked pretty good for me so far. Um, I like it a lot. I do want to upgrade tripods in the future. I want a bog that's on the list or something like that. Um, I haven't really set my sights on one particular. I did a review on a bog and really enjoyed it. And um, I think it's in the future, but I'm not 100% sure. So tripod set up next. Um, make sure you have something for a light attachment. I do a lot of predator hunting and nighttime hunting, so I do use a light. Um, if you are doing nighttime predator hunting, I would change optics. I don't really like the light. I prefer to go thermal or night vision. Um, I'm not quite sure how legal thermal hunting is. If you were using this for like everything, like if you were using this for deer, I don't think you can use thermal during the day to hunt deer. I know you can predator. Um, Maybe, maybe look at like an ATN 4K Pro that can do night vision and can do um, daytime hunting. Oh, excuse me. They can use, do night vision and daytime hunting, but I have a spot for my light. Alright, um, this, this hand stop, I don't really think it's necessary for hunting. Um, I don't find it very useful. I, I just, I like it. I find it useful. I don't find it incredibly useful. I wouldn't go out and buy it specifically for my hunting rifle. Uh, I use this rifle a little bit more for everything, um, so I wouldn't really include that on my hunting. Same with the bipod. I don't. Th I don't ever use the bipod while I'm hunting. No, I don't think it's very useful at all. All right. Um, last thing that. Well, I guess this is not really last thing. The last thing was the light. Now moving on to what I feel that I would like to change. So I would like to get a night vision or some kind of scope, maybe a day and night scope for the um, for this Grendel. Uh, I don't think that I will would want a thermal. I think I'd want to run the day night scope and then a thermal monopod or monocular. I don't know why I said monopod. The thermal monocular. Uh, just because you, you have a hard time identifying targets with thermal as opposed to having both so you can pick it up on thermal while you're scanning, you thermal scan, and you're like, oh, there it is, and then you can pick it up on your night vision, and that IR light come out, uh, whether it be attached to right here or attached to your scope, whatever it be, that IR light come out, and you can see exactly what you're shooting at, so you don't shoot a dog that looks exactly like a coyote, I don't know, um, not saying I would do that, I know the difference between a dog and a coyote, so, whatever, um, so, maybe scope. Uh, and last thing, a suppressor. Um, not a hundred percent necessary in any fashion, shape, form, or way uh, in terms of hunting, but it would be useful. Um, like for example, coyote hunting. Maybe take better follow-up shots. Maybe the animals aren't as spooked, um, and just help my ears because I don't wear ear protection when I go hunting. Uh, so a suppressor would help and. I mean, let's be honest, they look awesome anyway. 
right? So that about that about sums it up for my hunting build, um, what I have on it, and some of the things I look to upgrade in the future. All right. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I really like everything to do with ARs, AR-15s, um, building guns, everything about it. So I really like to talk about it, and I really enjoy making these videos. So I appreciate everybody for watching. It would mean a ton to me if you hit that subscribe button. We're doing really good, and I want to keep doing really good. Get those views up, and keep putting my content out there. Um, I'm excited for what's to come. But that about does it, guys. I appreciate everybody for watching, and as always, take someone outdoors. I'll see you all next time.